All right. So hello, 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 everybody. Welcome to the show. It's the Musings and Music show, not the music part of it, even though both of us who are on this show right now love music. It may be different genres, but we do love music, and we'll get to that later on. But welcome to the Musings part where we are kind of semi-serious. It's not a very serious thing, but at least we talk about issues. I have a gentleman here with me, a respectable gentleman here with me today, a special guest. Uh, that's why I had to, I mean, come correct, as they say. Look at my big old earrings I'm wearing there. <laughs> this is kind of really funny. I'm trying not to laugh because I'm trying to both honor his position. And then it's hard for me to even do that mind shift because this is somebody I have known 40 years that I've known only so well. And um, I even have the mind shift thinking about him in his actual functions. I know if I dare say his excellency, he'll say, don't do that. <laughs> but I want to go ahead and have him introduce himself. If I ask if my audience hasn't recognized you by now, then uh, who are they looking at? Who are they going to be listening to for at least about an hour? Uh, thank you, uh, my dear Tonde. You know, many people call you their own name. My own that I choose is calling you a Tonde. Yes. Some call you Egwe and so on and so forth. Right. So my dear Tonde, it's a pleasure uh, sharing this conversation with you. Mm -hmm. uh, as you said, we've come a very long way. We know each other just so well. And um, given the fact that we are celebrating our 40 years of meeting in high school, and precisely in Kazbambili, uh, I mean, I just felt um, humbled that I should uh, come take part in this conversation at Vosa World Radio, mm -hmm. which I want to probably start by doffing my hat to you and the owners of this radio station for the wonderful work you are doing. Thank uh, you. Even though we may be several thousand <clears throat> kilometers, miles away mm -hmm. in our small world, the impact, the reach out is felt and I'm sure very, very appreciated. I thank you on their behalf. I thank you on their behalf for the, for the kind words. Uh, about myself, uh, I believe I'm not introducing myself to you. No, ask me. <laughs> it's for the benefit of the audience. <laughs> to, to the audience. My mm -hmm. name is Paul Tassong. Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> I'm a bit uh, under 60. Uh -huh. um, I went to Kazbambili 40 years ago. Right. And I'm a family man. Yep. Um, Very much so. Uh, with four kids. Mm -hmm. uh, plus. Because uh, in Africa, we, oh, yes. it's difficult to say you have two kids. Because before you realize, there are many other kids who are calling you daddy and so on and right. so forth. Right. And uh, let me cue up from Janet Kim, who said she was a village girl. I think today you have a village boy. Yep. Have a village boy, because uh, when I listened to the conversation with Janet, mm -hmm. I very much felt the same. You could relate. Um, yeah, I related a whole lot with the things Janet said about her origins, her beginnings, her humble beginnings, as she put it. Mm -hmm. And immediately it takes me back to somewhere in the mid 90s when uh, I heard Hillary Clinton say, it takes a village to raise a child. And I remember when I left the village in 1975, Mm -hmm. Then I was 12. I was leaving the village for my first time to go to Secretary College. The entire village contributed to pay my fees. Oh, my goodness. Because, uh, when my dad went to Bamenda and came back with my admission into Secretary College and announced to the village that I was going to a college that would cost 90,000 francs in those days, it was like, where the hell does he think he's going to get the money to sponsor this guy in that school for, for, for the next five years? So it's like the entire village uh, contributed in making it happen. Uh, there is one precious thing that I just lost because of certain circumstances. My exercise book in which 
I recorded those contributions, which ranged from 25 francs to maybe a thousand. I'm tearing up as I'm listening to this. Eh? And, I didn't know these details. I knew mm -hmm. the general thing, but I didn't know these details. Oh my well, goodness, what a um, story. That's my the story of the village boy where I am. I call myself the village boy because I belong to that village. Right. Because that village made me what Crazy. I am. Raised you. And yes, the village raised me, made me what I am. And my attachment to that village mocked me in a law subdivision. Right. Uh, my attachment is uh, unwavering, mm -hmm. uh, despite several challenges that we, we may face from time to time. Mm -hmm. uh, my navel is buried right there. Right. And uh, my dad and my mom are buried right there as well. Mm -hmm. So that's me. That's where I come from. And as I said, I, I left that village when I was 12. Uh, for my first time, I left the village. Uh, I wonder what you were thinking, though. You see, because you hadn't been to the He had been there and seen the place. Yes. He had a vision for his child, for his son. Are you his first? I'm not his first, but I'm, I'm the second, but I'm the first who went to secondary school. Right. My senior brothers didn't go to secondary school. Uh -huh. I'm the first who went to secondary school. For yeah. some reason, I didn't, you wouldn't even imagine, I didn't go for interview in Secret College. I, well, the news was everywhere that that was the best college in Cameroon. Right. My dad was so determined to, to, to send me to that school that on his own, he went there with my report cards, my primary school report cards, and asked the principal of Secret to give him one reason why this son of his did not deserve to be there. Then the principal asked, like, where is he? Why didn't you come? Where is he? You want me to admit a ghost in my school? And my dad was, no, he is sick. He can't make it. But tell me why you wouldn't admit him. And I'm telling you on the strength of that argument, I had, well, I had my admission into Secret without doing the interview. Just looking at my primary school records, I think was enough. Uh, yes, and I'm sure on honoring the determination when if you see a dad that believes so much in his son that he would come all the way and say you need to put my kid in here i would listen to someone coming from a village right coming to plead his son's case i would listen to yes and um you want to know that um it's on that day that um uh, 7th of september 1975 that I, I saw a town for my first time, that's Chang. Mm -hmm. And of course, I saw electricity for my first time as well. And I saw uh, uh, water flowing from a tap for my first time as well. That was the 7th of September, uh, 1975. And I would say that was the beginning of uh, okay. uh, an oh. event you know, which has taken us to where we are today. What a long way you have come from. What a long, long, long way you have come from. And you see, those humble beginnings explain a lot about the person that you are. You see, this interview today, you haven't mentioned, you see, I said, who are you? You haven't mentioned the political side of anything at all. This is a cabinet minister. He has not mentioned anything, his excellence and all of that stuff. He has not mentioned any bit of that. And it really ties into what I'm trying to do because that you can go and look online, go Google. You'll see Porter, so you'll see where he's been education wise, uh, politics wise, uh, the economy wise. I, I, I have your curriculum retained in front of me, your profile. I read so much macro, microeconomics, I just got a, myself a good old headache and just give up, give, give up on it because I said the press, what I want to really do today is let people see the man, the person behind the titles you see, the, the person that people don't know, that I know that I have known for 40 years. Because if I were to describe you, what you've said there, it is true that people, um, not everybody who has this humble beginnings keeps that humility. But it explains a lot of things about why, because if I have to say one thing, clean play thing about you from the get go like that, very personable, very uh, unassuming. Second thing, extremely generous and kind hearted. This, and it, those are the things that, that, that when I think about you as a person that I know come to mind readily. I will off the bat now just give two examples that have touched me I, 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 over the years and one very recent example. The more recent one is one secret that I haven't even ever met before, lost her dad. And she said she's trying to get documents from Cameroon. The funeral home out here in the States is asking for stuff. 
she has there's there was a long holiday. I don't know holidays and things that were happening in between. She says, I, I'm at a loss. Auntie, can you help me? And I said, Well, I don't know anybody that I can really ask. Let me see if I can call and ask. And I put that matter in your hands. And the next thing I know, those papers had gone through. She was able to take her father home. I'm just letting you know now that that father did go home and he has been laid to rest peacefully. You don't know the girl. I myself haven't even ever seen her live. But on the strength of saying where well, there's this girl who has this issue and you sympathizing with it and got that done. Then the other more personal one that I will say here, and thank you for it publicly. I don't know if you even remember it. It's not the coming to the occasions that we had in uh, the, those were occasions. I'm talking about the time when you went to visit my mom before she passed on. I don't know if you even remember it. <laughs> of course I do. You do. Yes. You didn't tell me that you were even going there. You yes. just, I, it's from her I heard that, um, oh, your friend Paul has been here and he brought the whole of my 17 with him. It's, what, it's how she put it. <laughs> <laughs> because you looks like you had carried every fruit that was being sold there with you and brought there with your drive. You had come there for a meeting and you're heading to Kribi and you just said, let me go and you asked along and asked and they, they, they told you where the house was and you went and visited her. And then you told me, my goodness, why didn't I warn you? Because the woman sat you down and started asking you, what do you walk with Christ? No, you see, um, you see those kinds of things. I was touched. You see, Tonde, these things. Uh, um, I personally believe in celebrating people while they are alive, while they are here. There is no reason why you'll be my friend. Your mother will be alive, and I can meet her, but I will delay it and come to bury her. No, I don't believe in that. That's the thing. Yes. Um, you see, you 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 came there when when she passed on because she wasn't. It's not long after she passed on. I think the, the next year or so. Mm-hmm. But you come there now with a with, with a happy heart because she remembered it, even when she her, her mind began to fail her because of the Alzheimer's and stuff. She never forget. She, she never forgot that. She never did. So you see, I encourage my friends to um, make it possible to share good moments, laugh, and why not cry with their parents while right. they're here. There's no point knowing you and coming up one day to come take part in bearing. Your, one of your parents, right. when I could have met them and right. spent a good moment with them and just while, it. while they are still alive. Yep. I don't know, all of this comes especially with um, the way I feel about uh, uh, humanity. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are some words which make me kind of sick. When I hear someone say he is a self-made man, I'm like, oh my goodness. but you know what he's talking about? Because I don't think there is any self-made man in the world. No. Everybody, uh, everybody's lifestyle or way of approach of looking at things is shaped in one way or the other by somebody else. Right. That somebody could be your mom or your dad, could be your sister, could mm-hmm. be your friend, could be your schoolmate like you and I, could mm-hmm. be your colleague at work. Somehow, somebody helps mold us into who we are. True. So, it makes no sense to think that uh, someone is a self-made person. And to that effect, um, I like to look at the parents of, of my friends exactly like I, the way I look at my own parents. I can testify, because that story I told, I'm telling my own story, but no, look, I don't want to start mentioning names, but that, 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 what you did there, you have done for a whole bunch of us that have been your friends from UA1, from LA1 in mm-hmm. that Bambili. To me, that's what life is all about, you know. Life is all about sharing the common values. Uh, the good things that uh, we share are definitely more than the bad ones that uh, yes. more often than not just, just fall on us. So, uh, I mean, I, I, I always find it a bit difficult to, to call myself my, my mom and my dad's son because I think, they, well, of course, they brought me to the world. Right. They, they only played their own part in molding me. Uh, mm-hmm. Many other people stood on the road, uh, accompanied me on my on my way. My up, journey, yes. Just like my dad and my mom. So uh, I look at every other mom, every other dad, just the way I look at my, my, at my your own. own. Yes. At your own. It's a, it's, it's a very special thing. And, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, something that is really, really, really comm- uh, commendable. And um, so now, let, let, let their souls rest, they've gone on. At, at this age, at this age, as you're saying, pushing, we're all pushing on 60. Yeah. Very few of us still have 
both of the parents still there. Talk, we, we, some people have one left. Yes. Very few have both of the parents still yes. left there. But at least we can we can say so that we cherish the few that we do have left. Yes. We cherish the few that we do have left are, are around us and treat them uh, as as we say like they deserve to be treated with the, with respect and showing them the love while they're still here. Um, I would, sadly, that's not what everybody does, but we, we, I, that's why I'm particularly commending you for doing that. Now we're talking about that, that journey. Now you get to Sacred Heart College. <laughs> you get to Sacred Heart College and what are you thinking? Yes. Um, I think the six years I spent in Sacred Heart College, were the most challenging part of my life. Mm -hmm. And when I say I spent six years in Sacred Heart College, you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it indicates that I definitely uh, missed one promotion. Right, know? right. Yeah. So uh, I heard you say 75 and that already clicked. Voila. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so I uh, I spent five very difficult years in Sacred Heart College. This is not because we are on the anniversary of Cast Bambili. I think Cast Bambili was, those two years in Cast were some of the best years in my life. And generally, I would say, if you ask me to rewind the clock, I would take it back to 1981 and do two years again in Cast. Uh, I, think I, had, yeah, I think I had a lot of fun in Cast. I enjoyed myself in Cast. Uh, school was uh, reachable, you know. Yes. Uh, you didn't, you didn't, yes, you, yes, you had to work hard, but you didn't feel like you were going to fail. Yeah. The stress no. of thinking you're going to fail, never. No, never. Never, never, mm -mm. never. We met, I met great friends. Uh, of course, I didn't say I didn't meet great friends in Sacred Heart. I met a lot of them. But the, where I came from, mm -hmm. the, the <clears throat> I think the swing over was a bit brutal for right. me. Right. Um, I, I came in uh, being myself mm -hmm. and met an environment with people who were very different from me. Right. And my first and most complex challenge was uh, to get myself accepted. Right. That was, that was quite difficult. Right. But um, uh, somehow, by the time um, I finished three years in Sacred College, I was virtually everybody's friend. And that's when I became comfortable being there. That's when I, I felt like I was part of, of, of that community. That you belonged there. Yes, that I belong. And it had an immediate impact on my, on my results as well. Mm -hmm. you know, um, can you imagine someone who from class one to class seven never knew what it meant to be second in class? All of a sudden, you find yourself in a complex environment right. where um, you have friends who have had wonderful exposure, Yes. Uh, who have traveled some of them traveled the world. Some actually came to school flying from Yaoundé to, to Bali airport and so on and so forth. And you remember your, your three hours trek from your village to where you, 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 you met a bus that took you to, 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 to Chang, from Chang. another bus to Bafusam and then to Bamenda and all of that. And your little uh, pocket allowance that your father gave you was quite depleted. Yeah, insignificant in the, uh, uh, compared to what the others had. And, you know, all of that uh, made the beginnings very difficult, oh. very frustrating. Mm -hmm. And uh, I also think um, uh, academically, many things were good, but um, uh, I had very, very serious challenges in the sciences. Mm -hmm which uh, uh, probably to some extent could be explained by where I was coming from. Right. And because I was stuck with these science subjects from, from one to from three, mm -hmm. uh, my academic record suffered, from, from, it. Yeah, mm -hmm. suffered from it. Thank God the moment I crossed into from four, I said, okay, I'm done with you guys. Oh, and buddy. I took my position in, 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 in class. I mean, I, I, I got to where I, I had to be. And you don't know how thankful I was too for that 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 switch you from <laughs> four. Four. Goodbye chemistry, goodbye physics. Yes. Oh, but I could not wait. Yes. Unfortunately, they, they, they insisted on math all the way through. I was like, I mean, you know, I wish I did. We didn't have to do that math. I'd have said kissed it goodbye as well. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, um, there's something that happened to me in in 1978. That was when I was in from three. Mm 
-hmm. which uh, has stayed with me, which I'll never forget. My senior brother, the one, uh, Peter, he's called Peter, I am Paul. Mm -hmm. Peter is my direct senior brother. Mm -hmm. And he came to visit me in school. Mm -hmm. And since he left primary school and opted not to go to college, mm -hmm. he was already doing his things and having money. So Peter came visited me and gave me 5,000. That was the first time ever I owned 5,000 of my own. Oh. And I was like, look, this 5,000, if I spend you now, you get finished. So what will happen thereafter? And I decided that I'm going to have this 5,000 for as long as I can have it. Repeat. So... Uh, I created my little business structure around me in the school, in the dormitory. And uh, to the extent that um, every, uh, every friend in school, I mean, all the student community as a whole, knew that they could come to me for some essential needs because Sacred Heart College was quite far from the city. Right. And when you run out of your supplies, you are in trouble until the next outing. Right. So that's the story of every boarding school. And um, I, I set up my little business around my locker in school. I know that and, story. And that, 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 when I sometimes I sit with Peter and I'll tell him, you know what, he said, I said, look, that 5,000, I still have it up to today. <laughs> yes. it's, 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 it's a story which I can't forget because. Um, Throughout the rest of my life in Secret, I had that money. Because right. what I would do is, somewhere in the middle of the term, when friends start running out of money, they'll come and say, can you loan me 500, 1,000? Of course, I'll do it because I don't want to keep too much money around me. Otherwise, right. I'll, maybe they'll right. it or something. So right. I kind of became everybody's friend because um, I could meet their needs. Meet their needs and, and so on and so forth. Then, of course, uh, socially, my, my status got improved. Exactly. So, yeah, when we, when we transitioned from Salamander to, to the other... Uh, to the... To the uh, Semelqui. Yes. I was, I was able to, to, to afford mine, you know, without, oh, no. without, without much stress. And, I want, what were the two shirts called, Julie? <laughs> Yes, yes. Is it Julien or Tremblant? Our Julien shirt, our transparent Julien shirt. Yes, yes. So, um, oh, dear. The secret was quite a challenge. Mm -hmm. The secret was quite a challenge. But uh, thank God, uh, it all turned out well. It turned right. out well. We, um, I still remain very much a Shesan. Um, I'm active in Shesan activities. Mm -hmm. um, we push Shesan to to its limits, um, we recently were able to push Shesa Yaoundé to initiate and create a, a credit union in Yaoundé. And uh, so, far, so far it's running. And, and you know what, let me tell you something. Do you know that at this time, we have three Shesans in government at the same time? Yes. Yes, we have yes. three Shesans in government. And, <laughs> You know, and we have um, other very uh, highly placed citizens in the private and public sectors in Cameroon. So, I mean, I, I am a very proud and happy citizen. Um, a good reason. Yes. Um, my kids didn't go to Secret College. Mm -hmm. But whenever there is need to do anything to, to, to help Secret maintain its, 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 its flying colors or to, you know, come to the assistance of students in the school, just like everyone else, we, we, don't ex we don't hesitate. But anyway, we are here to talk about the 40th anniversary of Kaz Bambili. Right, not only that, no, not only that, we are, we are here to actually inspire. To celebrate. Yes. To, to celebrate and then inspire, because yes. I know that people are listening to this and there's, there's, there's a lot of lessons people learn just by listening to somebody, because now look at where, what you have achieved. It tells the story. Because a lot of people sit and say, my own no day. That's, you sit and you say, my own no day, how am I going to compete with this kind of with these people? How am I going to live out on the same playing field? And you get discouraged and you sit there. But this is a living example of how determination, of how courage, of how just having a vision of the fact that I, I'm just going to make things better for myself can work. Yeah. So you so you work towards that and then you think you put whatever it is that you you, you can put. That was very, very that is not book smart. <laughs> it is street being streetwise. Being, I don't know what the, what the word I'm trying to look for is, 
to, uh, to be able to do what it is that you did. It has nothing to do with, they're not going to read what you did in a book. No. There's no page you got. And that's what I'm trying to put out to, to, to people, let, to, especially the youth, we're talking about inspiring yes, before yes. we expire. Yes. That's someone who is listening to this. And even parents who are listening to this, there's so much to, to unpack from the story that you the stories that you have even already told so far. And how just persistence, perseverance, and I guess believing in yourself, sitting down there and refuse to be to be beaten and just continue to just forge ahead, forge ahead, forge ahead. Because in, in that promotion of ours, you are the, inarguably the highest placed person now in rank. And if you had looked at it from the from the days of the 1975, and they came, you know how in these our schools out here they do most likely to succeed, most likely to become this, most likely to become <laughs> that. Who would have gone to that Sacred Heart class and said, "Oh, this one most likely to succeed"? You may not have looked that way. I'm not even sure whether you yourself knew that I was coming. But as time went on, as time went on, things things uh, ended up being the way that they've ended up being. So now, okay, you land in Kasbambili. You're an early one. You're an independence from day one, right? In independence, you're in, in the dump yes, of day one. Yes. 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 Yeah, I remember did, that. Yes. I was in independence one the first year. Yes. In one, uh, lower six. Yes. In upper six. Right. Yeah. And so for you, what was the what was the what was new or different about Bambili when you first got there, besides spot bar? <laughs> <laughs> of course. Um, of course. Um, the simple fact of being in high school. Mm -hmm. Was 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 already something. Mm -hmm. um, it was the ultimate celebration of the fact that we went through secondary school and passed. That but your O levels. Mm -hmm. And then, um, <clears throat> for the first time, uh, sat in class with with girls like you. Right. That was uh, quite uncommon. Uh, for for me, the same having come from an all girls school as well. Coming yes. from Sacred College. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 the, 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 the amount of liberty, freedom, right. to go about, to, I mean, you know, to do what you want in caste was definitely uh, much more than what we had in Sacred College. Mm -hmm. uh, how, how do I put it? You know, then <clears throat> the, the, even the teaching staff, the way they did it, was right. not exactly the way uh, things were done in Sacred. In Sacred, we were, we were like, children. But right. in, in caste, we were already adults. Yes, I mean, we we're on our way to adulthood somehow. Right. But we were big boys, uh, uh -huh. bigger than what we, we, we came, uh, we came to, to, to caste with. And um, the contact with the community was completely different. Right. Just go to where you want to go. At right. any time, even though we were in boarding school, you could go to town when you want to go to town. Yeah. You don't need to seek anybody's permission. Yeah. And of course, this came with the big challenge of being able to discipline oneself. Because uh, Bingo. if you um, were not able to discipline yourself properly, you could uh, poorly manage this extreme liberty and uh, that would be the end. Mm -hmm. and, and I must say, um, this is uh, one of the things that um, I am very thankful for or the, the friends I met in cast, mm -hmm. uh, uh, notwithstanding those I came from Sacred Heart with. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, I mean, that adolescent age opened doors to very stupid things. Right. But somehow, the group of friends with who I, I, I hung around mm -hmm. were able to manage the two ends of, 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 of the line, you know, we were able to enjoy ourselves. Very well. But at the same time, sit down and focus when it's important. Oh, yes. Because it's not like coming, we, we, that, yes. that spot bathing. Yes, yes. Get into your books, study. Right. Yeah. right. Stop going to town for whatever, whatever it is. Right. Sit down and bury your head in those books and study. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yes. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, um, those I call my my best friends of the age of innocence mm -hmm. uh, generally from anyway from Sacred Heart College and, and Cast Bambini. Mm -hmm. We we continue to make friends as we as we go up. But the the depth and the integrity of friendship changes as well. 
Right. Because professionally, you may meet some extremely wonderful people on the way. True. You become good friends. Yes. But nothing excludes the fact that that friendship could be tainted with some interest. Because right. Probably there's something you can offer or probably uh, something he can offer you. Yeah. But when we met in secondary school, in high school, our friendship was as pure as anything, you know. Exactly. Friendship exactly. without interest. We shared the little that we had. I can't remember how many times I went to Becky in the morning <laughs> for Puff Puff, and I had no money, but I always had Puff Puff because right. Right. you guys were there. Right. Yes, uh, but you used to go to that, 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 that spot bar. You, you buy one, one bottle, yes. two bottles of top and, <laughs> oh, and then everybody got a sip, a sip from it. Yes. That was it. Yes. They play that book. for yes. you. It was reggae. Oh my goodness! Come and see. <laughs> <laughs> you come. <laughs> 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 the first time somebody said Paul Tassel, I'm like, who? Because I'm just used to you. You come. That is it. That is it. <laughs> I knew he's dancing there. He and waters, waters are the, are on the floor. When they put the bakusa thing, that complement and that's what it is. <laughs> and it's a funny thing for even my children to see. Just the other day, Fritz Felix was was here in the house, and my son was just watching us chat. Mm -hmm. we, are, we are pushing on sixty, like you like you said. Look at the two little people, ha ha ha, ha laughing. If I look at how ridiculous when I say ridiculous in quotes that chat with Atsa was. We just sat down, we forgot that there was anybody we were talking to and just talked and talked and talked. Like we're beginning to laugh now. I know if I go down this road, <laughs> road we will laugh our, our heads off. Trying to run out from that when you hear that Miss Sambu, <laughs> Miss Sambu is going to the dormitories to take, <laughs> to take roll call. Then you start on, the, on, that, on, on that door, trying to fly to get back to your room before he does. Then. Those are the kinds of things. And you just imagine that if they had sent you home and said, you had been suspended or so because you were not in the dormitory, you were out at night. It sound so bad, but yes. it wasn't. It really oh. was innocent. We oh. really went there. Mm -hmm. That that little bar, the, the, the music that they played there, the, the man's little um, turntable thing, yeah. the little the, the record player, mm -hmm. it would just, all the records were cracked. Yes. They put a Banda Manfred song, will start yeah. like <laughs> two seconds. <laughs> two seconds, the thing is finished. But we still went there. It was just a thing, a place to go yeah. be. Yes. Oh my goodness! We're it was really where the days we were contented with what we had. Exactly. And and I believe um, it was not so much for want of resources that we couldn't go to Bamenda every weekend. No, 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 no. It was we not the same go thing. To Bamenda every weekend if we if we if we chose to. We were in our environment. We understood right. the risks of going that far just for fun, and right. we made do with what we we had uh, uh, around us. Mm -hmm. And you know, we, I think it all came good. They all played out well because it did. It did. We, and, and the proof, the proof is in how close we all still are now. Yes. Now, it's forty years after. And it's I can amazing, pick, pick, amazing pick, how my phone. Yeah. It's amazing how um, the eighty-one, eighty-three uh, class of Cas Bambili has has come around to to you know reminisce in our friendship. Uh, mm -hmm share uh, good tidings, uh, share our old stories. Right. And even more importantly, stand by each other. Right. But, um, I right. think um, uh, while we prepare to celebrate our 40th anniversary, uh, mm -hmm. 40th anniversary of our meeting, mm -hmm. I think uh, the little things we've done in their own speak volumes of, of who we are. Exactly. Because um, come to think of those friends of ours who have not been so fortunate. Right. For no fault of theirs, have none uh, whatsoever. Have been uh, seriously challenged health wise. The simple fact that we're standing by them, by them as we prepare to celebrate 40 years of friendship. It's me, something. It's, it's, it, 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 look, look what it's doing for their families. You see the, the, their sisters and their, those who mm -hmm. have been caregivers for them all this time. You mm -hmm. see them, those little videos that we've been watching, they're saying thank you. Mm -hmm. you, you know? It makes it all worth it. It makes it all worth it, which is why I really am proud of our, of our class yeah. and everyone in, in it that's trying to do what it is that they're doing. Uh, even what we're doing here, to come and just go back and reminisce, tell our stories. Mm -hmm. Sometimes our children look at us like we, only, we, we arrived on this planet already old. <laughs> 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 they forget that it's like, like this. We actually were like them at some point in time. We have grown they, and they watch us. They see when I say this friend of mine, I said, Uncle Paul, when did you know Uncle Paul? In high school. Where are your own friends that you had in high school? Just you were in high school really like yesterday. 
Yes. You don't know where Sansu person is. You don't know where Sansu person is. I have all of mine. I picked the album. Yes, Uncle Paul right here. Then they're like, Uncle Paul had hair. <laughs> 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 he had an afro and they're like oh yes we we shot it <laughs> we shot it he had an, an afro it is the funniest part just to hear them when they talk about things but they they look at it and it tells them a lot about when i tell them there's no way i'm going to be miserable in this life it will not happen as long as my brothers are here and i don't know whether it's something about the fact that i lost the one biological one that i had boy did i adopt a bunch of brothers in that in that UA, what that LA one UA one, I knew you know, I had my back, all of you, from that day to this today. I mm. tell you, whether it's a, 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 they also say it on the ones I call it, I go to any place and I cannot lack a place to stay. It's just that mm -hmm. an amazing thing. Right. People who did not know each other before they mm -hmm. set foot in that place yeah. and are now this close. It's an amazing thing. So, this younger was listening to us, they say, make new friends, but keep the old. The people who know things about you, who know you, the real person, as, as, as you're saying, sans interest, it's not anything. It's yes. just they know you for who they are, who will be there with you, who you mm -hmm. can talk to and bond with. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's, that's really, really. So where do you see this? Way? If you had a way to say where you would want this whole cast thing to go from here, what do you see? Are you thinking, uh, like, for, for, like you've done for Shesans, a credit union, you're thinking what? Where would you like oh, to see um, also? Yeah. I think, um, yeah, um, creating an alumni association for cast family would be quite a challenge. Yes, because of how many yes. generations and promotions and batches have gone through it. Especially if you have to go back to our days to go mm -hmm. do that. The two years we spent in cast um, could only help a class to bond. Mm -hmm. but it was insufficient to really get a community to come. In, you know, the difference between uh, Shesa, uh, Secrets, and Opsans and the rest is that we spent five years mm -hmm. yep. living long time. really together uh, in, in boarding facilities. Mm -hmm. But cast in those days was just uh, two years. On top of which not everybody even stayed in the same no, unity no, no, or no. independence and reunification. There was Peace Hall, there was uh, uh, DOP, so all, all, I, I, all over the place, yes. I, I don't know if someone someday may think or uh, develop some time to put together a, a, a Cass Bambali uh, Alumni Association, but I think it will be quite a difficult one to put together, but not, not impossible. Right. Right. Not impossible. That, that may be the difference. Um, mm -hmm. With Shesa, just like uh, Soba and all the other five year. year. Yes, yes. And now it's even seven years. It's even seven years. Imagine seven years. Yes. Right. So mm -hmm. it's even longer, and uh, people can bond better. And, you know. And then, um, of course, there is the, the format of the ownership of the school, mm -hmm. which is another challenge. Um, some uh, publicly owned schools have been able to do that, Big C, mm -hmm. uh, I think, and uh, right. a, few, a few others. But um, the whole concept of um, uh, ex-student associations, I think, has thrived better with the, with the uh, mission. Privately owned, or privately owned and mission, yeah. So, so, so to speak. Mm -hmm. but, well, forecast, hmm. I I don't know. I can't tell you that I've, I've given that a thought, but I mm -hmm. I just would pray that our batch, our class continues to be cohesive. Yeah. Or used to stay together because mm -hmm. uh, there is just a lot that we can do together. True. Uh, it, it provides such a wonderful network of friends. Um, because when you look at when you look at the profiles of our classmates in high school. Amazing. Um, you I mean, have people who are um, powerful professionals in various areas. Very vast and very potential, fields. Mm -hmm. the potential that 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 lives within that diverse community of mm -hmm. ours is is something that um, uh, I personally will want and love to to see uh, grow stronger and explode someday 
for our benefit and of course for the benefit of, of the community at large and right. the community I mean the world because right we have we have right. friends and classmates who are on the other ends of the globe and right and everybody is doing their own thing and doing it so well mm -hmm. uh, of course uh, the other side is uh, networks are not only for improvement networks are also to help those who for one reason or the other may have been left behind correct not not everybody in our, in in our has yeah. has had a successful career there are some people who probably may never have been able to earn an hour of income all their lives right you know <clears throat> some some have been uh, very challenged seriously challenged heard wise uh, uh, but I, I mean i in, think in, in fact think, the, the, think about that we lost our sso um he had yes. he was sick and yes. passed on yes. Uh, yes. Peter Sanger. Mm -hmm. And, and I, I think one of our friends who who, who had leukemia, leukemia, I think I just read something on I that. just just before I came to do this, I just read that to him. Yes. Just he as passed. we're trying to figure out how to get together and go help him out and he, he and passed he passed on. So, you know, so I um I just hope that um uh, everybody comes on board this this group that we are trying to, to build and consolidate. Mm -hmm. Even those who may not have been very fortunate mm -hmm. should, uh, I don't know if it's the right thing to say, swallow their pride and come on board, but I think everybody should come on board. There is a lot that we can do for ourselves. And what I see in that group is nothing else but a lot of selflessness. Right. Who, who, you know, do you know what it means for 15 of us? to get into a Zoom meeting for four or five hours. Right. Eh? right. To, to think of, of what to do. What with to do. I mean, this is yep. value that cannot be monetized. At all. But and these, these are mom, dads, grandparents, it's, widows. Yes. It's, 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 yeah. Clicking in and spending four or five hours discussing what we should do with our alma mater and ourselves. Mm -hmm. It will only make more sense if everybody comes on. And I would particularly wish that as much as possible, our friends who have not been very lucky should not shy away from coming on. Right. Because it's only by coming on that we'll get to understand everybody's issues and challenges and problems. Right. And who knows? Who knows where the solutions come from? Exactly. There is exactly. not, we don't have a package of solutions waiting somewhere. No. But the problem but, but there may be openings right. that the person was not aware of. Right. In fact, in fact, there were one or two that have happened like that. I mean, of course, I cannot mention names, but somebody is saying, I have this place, go see this person. And, you know, what okay. we call hookups here, go yeah. ahead and, and put in a good word here, right. Right. Yeah, where the person may have gone on their own. And this person will be saying, Well, I don't know you and I know how do I, mean I can trust you. But on the word of somebody, in the group that they know, they say, go meet this person. And it can things can improve for you that way. Right. Because so nobody's judging. The network of friends that we have there, um, I think um, uh, after celebrating our 40th anniversary, mm -hmm. after, uh, how do I put it? After enacting our October rush, <laughs> on the 23rd of October, <laughs> in two weeks or so. <laughs> right. Uh, <laughs> We, it should not be the end. It should just. No. I think it should be. It should. Our our friendship should really be Christ crystallized right. in that event. That right. event should just be a high point in in what we are trying to do. Yes, um, a launching pad even for more yes, more, yes, more things. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. We should be able to 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 to. I mean, as you say, use it as a stepping pad and 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 fly higher and do and right. things, which right. I, believe we can yes we can a lot of them we can because that is what we tend to do there as you say it, that's a, that's how you establish a legacy yes. and leave something that people can say after, even after you are gone and say my goodness those people lived mm -hmm. this is they, they made a mark look mm -hmm. at what they started look at what ended up happening that mm -hmm. kind of a thing because as, as you say well, the, the the whole hype will go along with go away with you it will mm -hmm. not be the, the 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 clothing and the whatever that will be there it will be the last thing institutions that you put in place Yes, that will be there. We we I will not. It, it may be inappropriate for us to 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 go into some level of details on what we we're planning to do. 
mm -hmm. to commemorate our anniversary. But um, I, I believe uh, even the, 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 the schools of the nature of Kasbambili in the very developed Western world still have needs. They so uh, every little thing we can do in Kasbambili will be very, very helpful. You never know the little impact that it may have just on one single child. You know, it, 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 I had a phone call with, um, with Atar, I think two days ago. Mm -hmm. And um, he was narrating the story of Abu Machoy when, when they were in Bali. And I reminded Atar that when we were in Kasbambili, Governor Abu Machoy came to visit Kast. Yes, he did. Yes. That 20th, 20th anniversary celebration happened when we were yes. there. Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, imagine uh, Governor Abuem, Minister Abuem, uh, uh, 40 years ago, was governor of the Northwest province at the time. Mm -hmm. And I remember very well, he had um, this green Mercedes car, and he had a very beautiful wife. Mm -hmm. And he addressed us in cast. By, he, he, made, he made a powerful statement, which probably my words may not be exact, but I do remember mm -hmm. Minister Abuem, then governor of the Northwest province, mm -hmm. using words like, cast Bambili is an ever expanding citadel of learning. Mm -hmm. I don't know if it's exact, but these are some of the keywords that I picked from that statement that he made. I remember that citadel of learning quote, yes. I, I, I mean, it's someone I know very well, and uh, I, I plan to hold a conversation with him one of these days to, to, to tell him uh, the impact he left on all of us right. when he was governor uh, in the Northwest uh, province at the time. Mm -hmm. I think um, he may help me not measure uh, how much he inspired us, but I think he did. He did. And, okay. and, it's even even more so, even more so. Administrators in those days were more feared, right, than than, than respected. Not to talk of expecting them to be to be inspiring, but I think exactly. I think I think he was he was something. Was, he left his mark on 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 many uh, young people. Yes, yes. I yes. continue to drop my hat to him. Mm -hmm. Forty years after. We all remember him and his visits. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. It's we, we, didn't, we didn't feel that, that, that distance. Now many people have learned to come and be with the people and connect and relate. At the time, it was rare. Yes. It, was, it, was, it was pretty rare. You just saw somebody like, as you said, you feared them instead of this mm -hmm. thing about going to the cartier, sitting down in a, in, a, in, a, in a public place with people and just chatting mm -hmm. the way it was. And he was one of those who, who back then was already uh, functioning that way, which is yes. why it had an impact on us young right. younger people right and then so from Babylon we went on to to Guaykele, which is the, the <laughs> <laughs> to Guaykele, which is the who went there and so you went to do to do uh, law yes. okay yes. and how was that experience so now now you don't clear the sacred heart you cleared Bambili, now you're in, in Guaykele, and then what how was that what was that experience like um hmm. yeah that was a page in our lives, which um, uh, I think we all faced with a lot of challenges. Right. It's um, for you all in, in, in law, because yes. it was just huge, yes. my goodness, yes. you know, <clears throat> first of all, the, the whole environment of living in Yaoundé, mm -hmm. for the majority of us who came from high school in, in, in the Northwest, coming from the Northwest, Southwest, mm -hmm. uh, who have never lived in, in the French speaking part of Cameroon, mm -hmm. finding ourselves in the university. Already the environment itself is very intimidating. Right. You come from the Northwest where we do things the way we used to do things. Mm -hmm. You know that if you need to, to eat avocado, maybe with 50 francs, you will have a small basket of avocado. Yes, yeah. Then you, you walk into a, 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 a shop called Jacqueline, somewhere down the Cité Universitaire, and you see a, 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 an avocado uh, sitting right there with a price tag on it, avocado banjun, 350, 350 francs, one avocado. Right. 
You have come yeah. from Bamenda. I tell you. But you know, most of these things are within reach. Yeah. And first of all, you find yeah, yourself face to reality. Yeah. Here is a city where a pear, an avocado, is sold for 350 francs. Mm -hmm. You know, those little things. Yeah. Loan. The, 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 you have been talking about the avocado down in Jacques. Yeah, you know, what about the, the Tebela, the Prisunique, and the, and, 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 and the uh, other places that were there where you just like, oh, wow. Yeah, we are in 83 when we get to Yaoundé. For some of us who went to Yaoundé for the first time to go to university, mm -hmm. the environment itself is so, so terribly intimidating that you start wondering how you will survive in this place. Socially alone, and how much more academically? No, I'm coming to that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you try to rent a house. In Cast Bambini, when I left Independence Hall, when I went to uh, Upper Six, mm -hmm. I left Independence Hall to go rent in the Cartier. My rents were 3,000. So a term, my term rent was 9,000. For three months. Now this is me in Yaoundé. And <laughs> you try to touch around to see where you can live. And the stories of just imagining a room, a room for 15, 20,000. It's you're like, so how do you cope in this? Place? Cope? Even with the FC. Yes, no, no, the FC that. You know, <laughs> how do you cope in this place? Mm -hmm. Every other thing put together, everything is so scandalous. Mm -hmm. Now the academics itself, that's what brought us there. That's what took us there. Uh, in the faculty of law, mm -hmm. the interesting thing is we registered um, 1,700 mm -hmm. first year law. Mm -hmm and 1,700 students sitting in one class to be taught by a single professor. It, it, it's, it's- Unimaginable. You just, want, you just don't want to even think that this is possible. <laughs> it's, it's like you're dreaming. Now you are jam-packed in a stadium because those are <laughs> theaters when nothing <laughs> and some people treated it as that because they actually came with their radios and yes. their that... <laughs> yeah, they were nothing and, and their works. <laughs> were nothing other than sports arena. Yes. Find yourself in there, mm -hmm. 1,700 of you, mm -hmm. and the teacher is standing like a little speck somewhere teaching. So once in a while, we used to leave our faculty, the, 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 the lab, and just mm -hmm. come over there to sit and just to see the, to, see the, to, to, see, to see what, yeah. To so, observe the ambience. You know, um this the academic environment the setup the layout itself mm -hmm. is frustrating then of course the challenge of having to take notes in french i mean listen to a teacher teach in french this was yes. this alone was the one thing that could send any of us packing to get out of that place and he did send some packing. It, it was not for the faint of heart at all. I think, I, think, I think many of our friends just went back home. Right. Um, Same thing for the faculty, the science, even worse there, because whatever we had in, the, in, in, in law, it was triple that, that in, the, in the faculty, the science. Everybody somehow found his survival mechanism. I think a few of them were quite recognizable. Virtually everybody in the faculty of law Every francophone has had this anglophone friend, and every francophone, you know, and vice versa. So we had to click together. We had to make new friends. <laughs> right. I don't think this is the beginning of friends with interest. Exactly. With interest because you have you had to look for uh, a francophone with who you 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 know who will help you through that around every day. You study with him yes. because you will help him with the English. The English subject, and he will help you with the with the French subject. Mm -hmm. That that was, I think that that was one of one of the ways out. Mm -hmm. But the other way that I I used, and I think I exploited to the fullest, was the fact that I almost I decided virtually not to go to class because I had the impression that I was wasting my time going to sit in class. 
Mm -hmm. um, I'll sit in class, come out as blank as. When you went in? Yes. It's like, um, <clears throat> One thing that I remember very well in the University of Yaoundé, um, I think there is one thing that existed there, which should be commendable. The university had a good library. This, I think, is something that many of us may have forgotten. But I think that library was good enough. If not of that university library, I'm not sure I would have graduated. <clears throat> I don't think I would have picked my degree. Okay. So, I virtually decided not to go to class when the French teachers came to teach because it was no use. Mm -hmm. I'll sit there and I'll go back as if I went nowhere. So what I did is mm -hmm. I simply tapped my Francophone friends on what was taught in class. I will make have an idea of what was taught in class. And you have books in the library in English which will explain these things to you. They'll bring these things down to, you know, they'll break it down simply for you. So. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I organized myself not to not to go to class, but to spend my time in the library, but stay on calls with the syllabus. So when the tests and exams are, are come, then you go report to take them. Of course, I was always mm -hmm. I was always mm -hmm. in the library, but keeping track. So more or less, I was self teaching myself. Mm -hmm. I can even I can I can say so. Mm -hmm. I was self teaching myself, and <clears throat> um, three years uh, we were lucky that. Uh, uh, most of us and three years after we we all graduated right my story my story is 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 there's something interesting in my story you know we had this um media exams called Pasier, mm -hmm. which was in february mm -hmm. i i was in the habit of playing through the first time and forgetting that uh, uh Pasier's will come so for those three years i never had the pass mark in the Pasier's, but at the same time I never came back for September. Every year in June, I'll make it. <laughs> so <clears throat> the gap that I will create uh, by not making the pass mark in pass year, <clears throat> I always covered it up in June and and, and had I was able to go. Yes. That reminds me of the picture we just all shared not so long ago. That's yes. a four yes. of you. And I was saying, <clears throat> how did you promote manage? Because each time I look at that picture over the last four, uh, 40 yes. years, I would sit and smile and say, oh, precious memories. There's Waters in the, uh, in the picture, Waters Asia, there's you in it, there's yes. Sasa, and there's Clement. Yes. And I'm like, what do you, where did you believe your sister? <laughs> <laughs> where, 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 where was I when that was happening? But that was a celebration of having just graduated. Look at yes. how young yes. of having just graduated from, from, from university yes. Yes. every single time in, yes. in June. Because that, that, that rules you come to come back in September, as they say. Uh, mm -hmm. Other grade as Grie Amanda, yes. not that bunch, not, not, that, not that bunch of, of people. So. And, you know, um, the, the important thing too, which uh, <clears throat> I think it's always worth mentioning is after everything, mm -hmm. after everything, despite all the challenges, Despite the context, which was the context, which the context, the environment, which were very hostile, I should say, I think we were well trained in the University of Yaoundé. Oh, I, th I think uh, we were well trained. You, you, you uh, have since gone to Belgium, done Harvard, the, the studies there. Yeah. I have since come and gone to school out here. Look, mm -hmm. the intensity, the depth of what I was able to amass and learn there. If it comes to yeah. that, even even through secondary school, it's, I, I now not wonder anymore why poor like our parents mm -hmm. used to go like my mother went and taught in after doing um, standard six, mm -hmm. she went back and taught in the school. I'm like my, the, the standard six. What they knew as standard six then the amount of knowledge that they had as the standard six school certificate person is the equivalent of almost a degree now. To, to tell you the honest truth. Oh yes, you can say that again. You know, um, still um, active. Uh, back home and uh, managing uh, a lot of human resources mm -hmm. uh, at the level of the ministry, which I've done uh, for uh, 32, 33 years. Mm -hmm. What I see uh, is to some extent quite disheartening mm -hmm. because um, <clears throat> you are teacher of language mm -hmm. and uh, 
what is obvious is if you're unable to express yourself in any language, no matter how intelligent you are, no matter how good you are professionally, you are only good for yourself because the, the world will only share your knowledge, your intelligence, if you can bring it out. Right, if you can express if you, it. If you can't speak good English, mm -hmm. you can't speak good French, you can't speak any language that you choose as yours to express or to share what you have. Your ideas and your, yeah. what's the point? You know, there's something I, I tell my collaborators every day. Uh, I always remind them, when you write, remember that you're not writing for yourself. Mm -hmm. If you're writing for yourself, you will not need to write because it's all- It's already in your head. If you, when you write, you are writing for somebody else. So you have to ask yourself, if you were in that person's shoes, you'll be able to understand How what they Yes, yes. And um, this is to say, when you compare students who are graduating from universities nowadays, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. stepping into professional life, right. you, when you read the French and English that most of these young people write, you are like, what happened? Right. right. And, and don't think it's only in, in, in Cameroon there. I see the same thing here. I'm going. Right. Really? I'm so, trying to say, yeah. So I, I think there was there's something that is happening with education in the world as a whole. Right. And, um, and you, you see how even these things you see, the I know my mother used to, used to say, my goodness, that is you too, you too, hey, you too, just leave it alone. Because mm -hmm. this thing, she used to be upset. But, and now I'm getting to that point where my children, uh, miss, they will sit and say, as I'm sitting there on the family text thing, typing, they start mm -hmm. to, to come and make fun of me and say, it says mommy is typing, mommy is typing, mommy has been typing for how, <laughs> <laughs> for how long? It's because the text is coming out with commas and punctuation. Yes. This thing of saying you're dealing with you, you say you, and I, I just, I don't want to do it. I don't like to do it, and I don't do it. Yes, yes. I need to write my thing, the whole thing, the way it's supposed to be, in a proper kind of way. I remember my mother used to make a force like that, and I used to think, okay, no. But it's getting to me now and saying, but that's how they cannot spell. Yes. You know, you, yes. you, you, you spell check everything, you have the machines helping you to do so and so things. So you yourself as a person are having a problem now expressing yourself on right. your own, actually owning your knowledge. Right. So, you know, I mean, the, the, the one fact uh, that's there is all of us who went to the University of Yaoundé, mm -hmm. we were trained. Right. Otherwise, how will you explain those of our classmates who have been able to express themselves in extremely challenging professional environments? Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you don't want to start quoting who come who and leave who. I mean, those who came to the University of Yaoundé with us, who sat through three years to pick a degree with us, mm -hmm. who are able to be lawyers serving or in partnership with some of the best law firms in the world. Right. Uh, who are able to, to crisscross Africa on a daily basis. Working with the IMF, working with the World Bank, working what with the IMF, IMF. What would I, World Bank, what would IFC. I mean, we have these friends who came to that university of Yaoundé like us. Yeah. And I am extremely we, proud of Bangu I, I don't apologize for it at all. We were able to, you know, mm -mm. stand tall and compete very strongly in the world. Right. right. So it's, it's, it's which we, when, and when we came to do other studies after that, they, that, that felt like a walk in the park. Oh, yes. Because, because, oh, yes. because compared to what one had to do there, like, what, what is this? Is this anything? Oh, yes. It, it oh, yes. time consuming, but not doing any challenge to you mm. here is like forget it. If you've gone through Guayaquil, you there's no degree you cannot get. <laughs> you cannot get after that. You know, um, Guayaquil was so intensive to the extent that when I went to Enam, uh, I had the impression that I had more, I had time in my hands, and I I had to look for something to do with that time. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, <clears throat> I don't remember I ever came back from school in Enam and had to sit down and read my notes to prepare for exams. I just sitting in class and listening to the teacher was enough for me. Uh, Guacalea, I had to struggle. I had to struggle. Spend all those days in the library. 
Yeah, when I went to Enam, it was like, okay, I'm on a little vacation for two years, <laughs> and I have a diploma and, and, and a job thereafter. There you go. You know, so yes. I mean, compared, comparatively. Right, right, comparatively, right. Comparatively, uh, Guacere was, was tough, but mm -hmm. I think it was worth it. It was worth it. It was worth it. it, it the, the thing, I'm thinking about the fact that I think about my phonetics classes now and the things that are just, I, the things that I sit and teach now that are just there in my head already, they're not going anywhere. I got from there. Right. You see that I actually trust, they made us do, you see now they come, when I think about even secondary school, when you actually had to draw the map, who's going to give you a map for you to just put the things in there? No, you would draw that map of Australia <laughs> and New Zealand <laughs> and where the ship, where ship, cattle <laughs> rearing is going. Right. You go and do Akosumbo Dam. Would you? Yes. you All of those things that we learned that we yes. are working encyclopedias, I tell you. Yes, yes. You know, yeah. so, you know this, this show that you have here, Jeopardy. The people are sitting there sweating on the show trying to answer the questions, but they're asking what category. I'm sitting here amazing my children. They think, what a genius. <laughs> or else it was in my SM teacher. It was in the SM teacher. You're supposed to learn Ferdinand Magellan. Yes. We're sitting around the Cape of Good Hope. <laughs> <laughs> and all of those things that we were so, what we were expected to know and that we actually did know. Mm -hmm. So we, 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 we've been working steadily, steadily, steadily. We've gone from work, we've gone to Sacred Heart, Sacred Heart, Kasba, Bili, Kasba, Bili, Guayakele, and Enam. Yeah. And now let's talk about another place where with somebody who has been married, how many years now have you been married? How many years? 31. There you go. Yeah. Because I, I know that, I know the answer because you got married the, <laughs> the, same, this, the same year. Yes. 30, 31. And yeah. you actually did, I remember that celebration that you had afterwards. If just yes. today, I was looking at a picture of you carrying perps in yes. your hands, <laughs> in yes. your hands and dicks yes. and the rest of them in there. They got and went and went their tuxedos back and stood there. That was, that was something. Mm -hmm. You see, and you've always referred to perps as your best friend. Yes. And when we, when we watch you too, it's an amazing thing to see. Mm -hmm. So as if you said you were a family man, I heard you loud and clear. Yes. And that is a very important part of your life, of yes. who you are. That's that, that, that's that's you, yes. your wife, your children. Yes. What 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 do you want to tell us about that? Because you have, if, if I'm not mistaken, I have my favorites that I know I cannot lie. Uh -huh. <laughs> Nayeli. Yes. Nayeli yes. is my little girl because I mean she, she came watching later. <laughs> and it's just when my mother said the other day I spoke to her mother, she says go to just going to secondary school. Yes. I'm like, who? Because you see, it, it, yes, I cannot stop seeing her in the little church dress. When she was a little yeah. girl that was just born with all that hair. Yes. So she, her mother said, I said, she has got to secondary school to do what? To visit who? She says, no, so she herself has gone. And then she says, she has not cried and come back. Everything is good. So, she's in, everything she's, is good so far. She's in, she's in boarding school. And um, yes. it was quite a challenge to get her to accept to go to boarding school. Uh, uh, we, we thought it would be nice for her to go get boarding experience. Uh -huh. um, <clears throat> to, you know, it would help her see life differently. Right. Uh, she could stay home and go to school. She's done that all along. Right. But going to a boarding environment, of course, has its downside. But I think um, what the children actually can gain from living in a boarding environment <clears throat> more than what they will lose. Right. Uh, uh, there is this independent element which is important for the growth of every individual. It's only when you find yourself having to manage <coughs> your own self. Oh, preach on. Preach uh, right on. Yep. We, I mean, at this age where we are, having a child at home, a lot is compromised because there are also a lot of people at home right. who are ready to help that child. Right. Help, yes. But at the end of the day, is that really helping? It's the disservice you are doing them. The service you are doing to the child. Mm -hmm. Go over there. That is what my parents, that is the reasoning my parents had in saying, go and sit. So you, you, make, you, you, you face challenges, mm -hmm. sit down and figure out for yourself how to walk your way out of that thing you put yourself into on your own without somebody coming to bail you out. The middle mm -hmm. class in Cameroon is growing. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, many more households than before have some basic appliances at home mm -hmm. that didn't exist in those days. Right. It's easy to go to a home and see a washing machine. Right. It's easy to go to a home and see a lawnmower. 
Right. It's easy to go to a home and see uh, one or two drivers at home. Right. right. And house help. House helps, all of that. It's easy. If you are not careful, you, you, know, you may raise a child who does not know how to wash their own underwear. Right. So it's right. only um, letting this child go out to the boarding school, I mean, go out to the world through boarding world, that some of those realities come to stare at them straight in the face, and they will this, know that they have to sit up because that is exactly what life is all about. Right. You know? and, even, and even how to interact with other people, because you see, you're sitting in your home, everybody loves you. Yes. You see? They, you know, you know what was most difficult to my little girl to accept to go to boarding school? Uh, her hair. They're going to cut it. Yeah, they're going to cut my hair. Oh. But it's just hair. Nothing grows. They'll cut it, but it will grow back. And, you know? age, and, you know, we talked about it, talked about it, talked about it, and eventually she accepted to go to boarding school. Mm -hmm. It's there. Uh, that is a lot of hair that precious girl has for, for them to have to cut. I don't blame her. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't blame her for, his, for hesitating. I don't know if she will run back home. But uh, her brother said, her brother said she has run back home. So, <laughs> so every day, one more day has passed, she has not come back. <laughs> so they're like, she's like, yes, one more day has passed, she has not come back, which is a good sign. So she really may yes. have, have gone yes. through the worst of it and yes. coped, mm -hmm. yes, and, and, and not been come back. Then yeah, we, have, we have Vincent, of course. Yes. You know, yeah. like, you know the order in which they go for me. Yes. <laughs> yes. Vincent is. Um, our special baby. Mm -hmm. uh, our special baby, he is 21 now. And he's special to us because um, the same goes. People say it everywhere. God doesn't give you something you can carry. Mm -hmm. God only puts in your hands a situation that you can manage. You can handle it. Think what, you think can what handle. makes it possible for you anyway mm -hmm. to, 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 to manage the challenge. Right. Right. Vincent came as as a challenge, and he's been one since then. But, you know, we are lucky he has, or he's growing into uh, an exceptional human being of his own, despite uh, uh, his personal shortcomings. And um, uh, I, I think Vincent is one particular reason, if not all, that uh, I look at my wife with a lot of respect. And, Me too. Uh, you know, uh, there's no need to say this thing otherwise. In raising children, especially in our world, mm -hmm. the responsibility of the mother and that of the father cannot be measured. They, are, they can never be at par. The mom will always take the bigger share of responsibility in raising children. Mm -hmm. and going through all the difficulties that children go through. And this is not to, uh, this is not for any chauvinistic attitude. I think this is a reality. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is a reality. Some people may look at it otherwise. Some may think this is, what's he talking about? But for me, <clears throat> for me, every child that succeeds, the credit should go first to the mother. Because, um, for some reason, they are just always there for the kids more than us, the men. Right. It's, it, 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 it's, it's the, the role. It's, it's the, the role. This it's is not the fact. Right. This is just the fact. Mm -hmm. And my, my wife has this attachment with Vincent, which uh, you can't take it away from her. No. And it, but, but what do you, you see, the, the, the times when they come on out here, they, they, they've been out here, it's the, just it's the two of them, you know? I, I, I think for purposes of this conversation, mm -hmm. um, we can't just mention Vincent like this and pass. Right. We have to say a bit more about him. Right. Because um, for those who don't know, I mean, those following this, this conversation, mm -hmm. Vincent is a child born with special needs. He has uh, Down syndrome, mm -hmm. that's how they call it. Mm -hmm. And Down syndrome uh, uh, is actually, um, 
comes as a result of the uh, tripling of the 23rd chromosome mm. in a human being. Every human being has 23 pairs of chromosomes, mm -hmm. so 46 chromosomes. Mm -hmm. Down syndrome <clears throat> people come with 37, with 47 instead of 46. Mm -hmm. So the 23rd chromosome, instead of being a pair, is a triplet. And that alone uh, brings in a whole lot of disorder in, 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 that, in that human being. Mm -hmm. And this manifests itself in one of two ways. They either have uh, <clears throat> alimentary tract disorders or they have heart problems. So it's one or the other. Okay. And um, most of their uh, growth uh, factors are consequently retarded. Diminishes. Uh, yes, they, they don't grow at the same rate like like normal like normal people. Right. I I take the I, I seize this moment to say this, to say we have lots of people with this condition hidden in homes, which I think is not proper. You know, until you have a child of this condition, then you know that this condition actually exists. Right. But as I can and I look at how you've explained it, like a doctor, like a, anybody, like a physician, which if I had put you to do that and you did not have a child like that with special needs, you would not have been able to, but you've learned, you have learned, yes. 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 I, 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 I seize this moment to encourage parents who have children with special needs of any kind whatsoever. Mm -hmm. Please don't hide these human beings. Many of them have their own very high potentials, which can be developed. Many of them have their own potentials, which can be developed. And by the way, by the way, who has the capacity to decide to choose what you get as a child? When you go out there to procreate, you get what you get. Someone else decides on what you get. So happy with what you get, do what you must do with what you get. Right. Vincent um, has a very interesting story. Vincent has, um, he's 21, as I said, so, but he, he does homeschooling. His teacher comes home to, right. to, 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 to spend time with him. Mm -hmm. but he has a standard day. His activities are well planned. Yes. You know, he gets up in the morning. He does his, 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 his home sports. He does sports at home, takes his breakfast, goes to class with his teacher. And three times a week, uh, since he's home most of the time, three times a week, he goes to the golf course in Yaoundé, where he meets other children who come to play golf. And he has an opportunity to spend time in the open. And, and then twice a week, he goes to music school because he is just so fond of all musical instruments to the extent that during his 25th birthday, we actually made his cake. We ordered his birthday cake in the form of a guitar with the microphone sitting on the top of it. Right. So you see, right. yeah, these are people uh, that got brought to the world. God opted, God decided to give them as kids to certain yeah. parents. Please, parents, these children, these people are human beings who have- They too are created in his image. He didn't say, that's the thing, they are created are in Absolutely it. created in his image. Correct. I want to even because most think image is when of fingers and the toes. That's not what God, not, not, let's not go. I'm just trying to keep quiet so you can just keep talking. Just be talking so I don't say anything. And spend, spend one hour with Vincent and you will be amazed mm -hmm. with the fun that he will create, he will generate <laughs> around for you. You know, <laughs> he will sing, he will dance, he will look at, look at, when I come back, sometimes when I, when I meet him, when I come back home in the evening, like, you come look at me like, Daddy, look at your tum tum bele. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that was some years back. I've never forgotten this. You know, 
And yeah. I mean, he always has this way of, you know, lightening up, lightening up the, yes, the, the, yes. The, the, the environment, yes. yeah, cracking a joke and, 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 you know, but yeah. And we who, we who think, okay, you, you, you look at it and say, so far, Pekin, that is, that is your perception. Yes, in, yes, in, yes, in, yes. In, in, in his mind, that is not, that is not it. And it no, is, not at all, not at all. No, not at all. no. and it, I commend you both. I commend you both and perhaps, especially like you said, for raising him that way. Because I know how many months and months you'll come and spend out here for yes, the yes, test yes. and do the, all of those things and stuff. Dedicated parents, God chooses the, the people to send those his, his special children to. Yes, yes. And, it, it, and the worst thing you can do, I guess, is to fail to, 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 to own your status as the parent of a special kid yes. and doing that. And for those who sit and they think, okay, it's a matter of like, okay, so you, we are still here. You don't know, children are still being born every day to either your own children, your nephews and nieces. So how do you know you're not going to have a special needs kid coming down the pike? Yes. You well, know? Um, <clears throat> there, is a, there is an international day of Down syndrome. Yes, um, there is. Which, I, don't know, I, I, don't, I don't know what the date is, but there is. I've forgotten that date, but there is. We, some years back, we used to send Vincent to the radio and to TV. Yes. Really? Just to let other parents know that there is nothing, you did nothing wrong to right. have right. that child come your way. Right. And that you have to. You have to accept that child and give right. that child the possibility all of all the opportunities that you possibly can. Yes, yes, yes. yes. He, he went to the radio, I think, three or four times mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. a stretch, you know, just mm -hmm. to encourage other parents to understand that these are human beings right. who deserve. And uh, it matters. It yeah. matters all those times. It, it, each time that happens, somebody has heard, somebody has listened. Even as you just said that now, which is why I just kept quiet and let you speak mm -hmm. from a parent's point of view, from a dirty, you, you, you see how your face, you will, you, when you look at this, you will see <laughs> how your face lit up when you, when, as, you, as you are recall, recalling in your mind what he said to you when you came home. <laughs> to you. It's, it, it, you should see it and know, don't, don't deprive yourself of the joy of yes. raising a child that is special. And if you, you were the uncle, those of us were the uncles and aunties of those children, hug yes. them. Yes. Make them feel loved, make them feel uh, uh, accepted because that's what they deserve. Mm -hmm. That's what they deserve. They're mm -hmm. human beings like, like everybody else. And um, I ha I've, I've had these conversations with many, many other parents, many other specialists who know about the condition. Those children thrive, like Visa is thriving because of the love that, that the parents have shown them. Even our personal friend, Ashiri, I forgot to send you the little the, the video. I said I was going to, and I forgot to. I will do that. Where she comes and she's just, just speaking about albinism, mm -hmm. where, where we find a reason. Mm -hmm. it, it's amazing that you see us out here now, we're matching with a little uh, pancart. The thing mm -hmm. is saying, mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter, Black Lives Matter, because you should not be discriminated against because of the color of your skin. Mm -hmm. Then the same you, when you were there in Cameroon, here mm -hmm. we're saying, Ngengiru, mm -hmm. and whatever it is. Mm -hmm. That is the same thing. Yes. The, the reason why you're doing that is because only the color of the skin. If, you, if somebody who is a, a, an albino spoke here now and we're not seeing mm -hmm. their face, mm -hmm. do you hear from their voice tell that they are an albino? No, you, you cannot. Mm -hmm. So it, it is really, be, really strictly the color of their skin that you're judging them by. You can't. You can't. You can't, you, you, you can't do that. What a pity. I mean, we, we, have been, we have been lucky because um, um, our other children have understood Vincent very well. They know him very well. And uh, they love him a lot, and they make life very comfortable for him. He's right. his senior brother, Francis. Right. Francis is uh, 27, going to 28. Mm -hmm. uh, he's a civil engineer, working in Yaoundé, uh, mm -hmm. living on his own. But uh, ever so often, he comes home, he takes his brother for weekend, you know, right. takes him to, to a restaurant. Right. So they go, they go. They are the, the siblings of these children are the best yes. advocates for them. Yes. And yes. if you want to see mm -hmm. one, try. I, I, it happens everywhere, everywhere. If you want to see one them turn and show you something, mess yes. with that, mess with that, that that sibling of theirs. You will hear a thing or two. They, they are they are raised like that. It's as if God also sends those special children 
siblings who mm-hmm. have their backs. Right. <laughs> I don't want to tell the stories or call names. Oh my yeah. goodness. <laughs> because, because if you see what some yeah. of them have to say, they're like, what did you do? Oh, they are ready to, to. Mm-hmm. Somebody, something that somebody will say to them mm-hmm. and they will let it go. Mm-hmm. You say it about their, that, their sibling, mm-hmm. you will not be, be right. you'll you, you, you get, you get a, a, a tongue lashing yeah. at the very least from them. Yeah. So they are really yeah. their, 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 their siblings' best advocate because they are the ones who demystify all the, 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 the strange beliefs and things that people have surrounding them, uh, where, where they look down on them and say, no, just, just for me, teaching has helped me out here, has helped me a lot. Mm-hmm. Where I go and I see, uh, I meet people, children who are there of different kinds, with different uh, things. Like I didn't, I, I see one, there was one not long ago, it was Tourette's syndrome. She just got right up of her seat in the middle of, I was covering the class. So that's not really my, class, so I did not know. Usually if it's your class, they would have told you mm-hmm. this what's going on here, so you know what to expect. Mm-hmm. Out of her chest, she goes and she's, oh. mm-hmm. and she's doing all of this stuff and I'm going, okay, I know there's nothing wrong. Because this girl, when I walked in here, she was the sweetest person, was the one who even said hello first and everything. There's something going on. The, going on. And so she went out the door and was walking and pacing back and forth. Mm-hmm. And I, I called for the, the officer and said, can they send the counselor down? And they came and explained everything to me. So I just told her, just, just keep walking. And she was walking down, pacing down the hallway. Mm-hmm. It's just a child with the condition. But after a while, mm-hmm. she calmed down, yep. came back and sat, and mm-hmm. life continues. The students mm-hmm. have learned not to make it a big deal out of it. Mm-hmm. Give her a moment. Mm-hmm. Then she comes and sits back down, and life goes on. Pretty mm-hmm. thing, smart. Oh, no, no. Time for the test comes, she will do it, and she will pass, and she will go, she's going to be a, an asset to her environment, to her society. Mm-hmm. And for that kind of a thing, you would take her and go keep her in the back. No, no, yeah. No, no. 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 It's, not doing, it's not doing anybody anybody a, a, a service. Okay, so now we've gone through family life, like going through career life. I know this is a, 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 a political thing, but mm-hmm. then we know what's going on in our country and the issues that are happening there. At least we can deal with the humanitarian part of things. So, and I know that you've been doing work in our Northwest and Southwest provinces to mm-hmm. try to make things better for the IDPs, try to make, give a semblance of normalcy mm-hmm. in spite of what is going on out there. And I was going to ask, what are, what are the programs? What are the plans? What's and being done? I, I correct, not a semblance of normalcy. Normalcy. Mm-hmm. When you say semblance, mm-hmm. it's like, you know. Um, as you say, your editorial line probably may not... Uh, permit uh, uh, political discourse, but mm-hmm. uh, I definitely don't want to go down that road. Um, mm-hmm. uh, sure, a politician, uh, I am, but um, like a human being, I definitely wear several caps. I am myself, first of all, and then uh, 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 there is a political side of mm-hmm. what I do, but there's also the simple and purely professional side of what I do as well, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which uh, which can uh, uh, be dissociated, maybe not without difficulties, but which can be dissociated from, from the politics. Yep, yeah. we compartmentalize each thing. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, <clears throat> as you say, the, uh, our country is going through uh, a difficult moment. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> sometimes I am just overtly uh, optimistic. Uh, sometimes some of my friends have the impression that uh, I'm just too optimistic. But I always say, <clears throat> no matter how dark a cloud is, it's a silver lining hiding somewhere in that cloud. Mm-hmm. And someone has to look for that silver lining. Because that silver lining is what would dispel the darkness that that cloud is carrying. Mm -hmm. And we must be able uh, at all times try to turn a bad situation into good by picking out out those little things in that bad situation, which can help us learn to move forward in a better way Mm-hmm. And why not um, ensure that the bad situation doesn't repeat itself? Right. You know, um, 
the challenges at home for the two regions of the Northwest and Southwest are, are quite serious. Mm -hmm. And um, um, what I say is anything that you do without putting the human being at the center, I have a problem with that. Mm -hmm. I have a problem when any effort is not human centered. All development, which is not focused or centered on improving the living conditions of the citizens makes no sense to me at all. Mm -hmm. Anything that you want to do, you must focus it on the people. And focusing on the people, you don't need to attempt to, to retard or delay the development of, of the people. You can't say uh, children should wait one year at home, they can go back to school one year or two years after. No, two years, is, mm -hmm. one year is a whole lot of time. The long and short is, um, <clears throat> In a crisis situation, you can decide to track the crisis or measure the evolution of the crisis using several parameters. Mm -hmm. You can decide that you count the number of gunshots that go off every morning. Mm -hmm. You can decide that you count the dirt, people who die every morning. You can decide that you will try to um, estimate the amount of, the number of people who are, uh, uh, taking hostage, ransom spade, and all of that. But then you can also decide to look at how the economy is faring. Mm -hmm. You can also decide to look at how social life uh, is, is, is behaving <clears throat> or, or managing to survive with the, with the, cri with the crisis as the crisis rage on. Mm -hmm. So this is, this is the line which, which, which is mine. Mm -hmm. The... <clears throat> Um, there are several package or pockets of solutions in any crisis situation. And the, 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 the line of solutions for which I have a direct responsibility mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> under the supervision of my hierarchy <clears throat> is um, uh, enabling the, the victims Mm -hmm. the crisis to regain their dignity, mm -hmm. enabling um, the victims of the crisis to um, reduce the pain and suffering that comes, that mm -hmm. comes mm -hmm. everything that they, that they go through on, on, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. and, and, and to this effect, <clears throat> in 2018, um, while the crisis raged on, I sat one day and I, I said to myself, we're in a difficult situation. Mm -hmm. uh, no difficult situation lasts forever. This difficult situation will come to pass. Mm -hmm. Not when it passes that we start looking on how to rebuild. True. I immediately thought we need to start figuring out how to put the pieces together and enable people to, to, to gain back their, their, their lives. Right. And uh, we did a rapid um, survey, uh, kind of uh, assess the social and economic impact of the crisis on the lives of the people. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, on the basis of the empirical data that we collected and analyzed, uh, uh, we were tasked with um, uh, overseeing the implementation of the reconstruction and development plan of, okay. of the two regions, which comes in, 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 three, in three major phases. Mm -hmm. But uh, for purposes of this conversation, I think we stay on the essential, which is livelihood of the people. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> you know, as I said, the essence is, uh, Restore dignity. And when I say restore dignity, uh, uh -huh. uh, I don't take it at surface level. There are a few things which which a human being doesn't who doesn't have it's a, it's a human being whose dignity has been diminished. You know very well how life uh, runs in our country, mm -hmm. especially in a crisis situation. Security concerns and what have you, 
a human being, a citizen, must at all times be able to identify he or himself. But a citizen who lost his identification papers, to okay. crime, that's definitely a citizen who has no dignity. Because it's not impossible that at a control point, you find him sitting right on the floor. Right. He's not able to identify himself. So right. those little things, those little things. Yep. We have people who lost all their civil status documentation, right. including academic diplomas okay. and certificates hmm. because of the crisis. These are little things which for us are important if people must regain their dignity. A family that doesn't have a home anymore because their home was destroyed mm -hmm. is where are they living? Mm -hmm. Surviving maybe as refugees somewhere or, or as internally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. there, is, there is lost dignity when mm -hmm. these kind of things happen to people. Mm -hmm. You have your source of livelihood. Maybe your farm, maybe your, your little store in the village square or something. And that's you gone. can't run because of the crisis. Mm -hmm. All of that. You have kids who can't go to school, maybe because the school was burned down and so on and so forth. You have communities that... Um, can't enjoy the things that uh, usher in modernity like electricity and so on and so forth mm -hmm. because the power lines were ruined, uh, water systems were ruined and so on. So uh, essentially uh, that component of uh, the assignment is to enable the communities mm -hmm. regain access to these basic, uh, basic amenities. And I, I am glad, I think um, uh, despite a lot of difficulties, uh, uh, we are doing it slowly and, and steadily. Mm -hmm. And um, we recently tried to carry an assessment, carry on an assessment of uh, the evolution of the socioeconomic uh, aspects of, of life mm -hmm. from 2017 to 2020. Mm -hmm. And it, it's amazing the things, the things that we saw uh, coming out of, of, of that analysis. I'll pick one or two little things. Mm -hmm show you uh, CDC, for example, is the second employer to the state. Mm -hmm. And the biggest employer in terms of crop in the CDC is banana. Mm -hmm. Want to imagine that in 2019, CDC didn't export a single banana. So ask yourself the question, what happens to the families of those banana who mm -hmm. depended solely on banana to, to survive? That is a story apart. But mm -hmm. There are even more touching issues. In 2016, 2017, we had 1.1 million pupils and students enrolled in secondary and primary schools in the two regions. Mm -hmm. That figure fell to 225,000 in 2019. But in 2020, it's back up. 2020, at the close of 2020, we had um, 427,000 students and people in school. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> this year, this the current academic year, at the end of the month of September, mm -hmm. we had about 600,000 people and students enrolled in school, which is a good sign. Yes. Good sign that, mm -hmm. uh, that, that, that things can happen. But there are some indicators that we, we analyzed, we took interest in, we looked at, which are which, uh, very disheartening. You want to know that in 2016, 2% of deliveries, child deliveries, mm -hmm. were done at home. So in 2019, mm -hmm. it went up to 9%. 9% of all children born in Northwest and Southwest were born at home. This is very mm -hmm. bad. Of course, you know that the danger, the danger, if, 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 home if, delivery is the major cause of infant mortality. Correct. So you see, those are the kind of situations. And the, the, the core of our job is to keep track of these indicators one by one and see what we can do to ensure that we reverse the downward trend. Right. Most of these indicators really dipped, uh, dived yeah. really deep uh, <clears throat> between, between 2017 and 2019. But from 2020, right. The upward trend is, 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 it, it's, is it's looking up. And, and, and I don't know who is not going to be happy for that. I don't care what your leaning is one way or the other. When it comes to humanitarian things like this, as you're talking about the person, the people that make up the thing, nobody should actually want to see somebody uh, uh, suffer. 
nobody wants their fellow citizen or their sister or their brother or anybody, even if they're not to actually suffer. So it's, it's something which we should be. But, but yeah. let, me, let, me, let me do a precision here. Mm -hmm. in, in international circles, UN and other standards, mm -hmm. this kind of work that we're doing is not humanitarian. Mm -hmm. you know, it's not humanitarian. Humanitarian work in, in, in US language, mm -hmm. essentially handouts. That is right. help people to live on a daily basis. That mm -hmm. is and give you rice mm -hmm. and give you fish. Right. So what, like, like charity. what we are doing is not giving people fish, but teaching people how to fish. More. Right. That is trying to help them get back on their feet. Yes, get the get the communities to function as they were before the crisis. Mm -hmm. That's 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 what we are on. Mm -hmm. So we do we call it recovery. We have the people who are the lifestyles. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. We call it we call it recovery. Mm -hmm. So this is this is the the kind of thing we. we I I am hopeful along with you, and I and I take my cue from other places where things have been much worse, and that 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 by the grace of God, to that page is be, is behind them. There was a time when there was Nazi Germany, and everything was that is the way. There was the Second World War, the First World War, all that desolation and all that destruction and everything, and people bounced back. So I, I my hope and my prayer has always been that the time will come when we can put this behind us, and then we can we can move forward. And that in a, in a way that is going to be, yeah, we know no world, there's no utopia. World is not going to be ever ever perfect, but we can at least go back to something which uh, um, is going to be beneficial and livable by the average person who's able to put in some amount of, of, of work and get something back for their for their efforts, for the, for the efforts that they put into it. Mm -hmm. You know, we, um, the kind of work that we do generally, that is from the point of view of planning, mm -hmm. uh, that's what I do every day. Uh, right, because and, and you've written extensively about yeah. plans and plans for yeah. years, years, years. We, we call ourselves architects of the future. And um, <laughs> when this crisis set in, the one thing um, uh, that we did was to um, try to build a body of knowledge around mm -hmm. managing crisis mm -hmm. and uh, monitoring the evolution of crisis. Right. And um, <clears throat> after some very time consuming and uh, uh, difficult uh, reflections, uh, I came to the conclusion that this crisis would phase out in five years. And uh, I think from now moving forward or five from the time when it actually from the time it started. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes, from the time it started. Mm -hmm. That's we have about one year to go. Yes. That was my prediction. Mm -hmm. Predicted mm -hmm. five years of crisis mm -hmm. and the crisis will phase out. Um it may not be watertight at five years. Mm -hmm. It may not be like five years, day on day. But the dot, like you give, give it dates. But I'm still confident that, uh, that by the time the crisis leaves to its fifth year, uh, it would have sufficiently um, died down mm -hmm. for life to begin to become more normal. Of course, right. still expect still expect some flashpoints or certain number of things to happen during the last year, mm -hmm. but it's important not only to look at the moment, mm -hmm. but there's something statisticians call time series time series data. You know, they mm -hmm. track something over a period of time and right. see how the graph behaves itself. And if you take every aspect of life. In the northwest and southwest regions for the past four years and running to the five years mm -hmm. and you do a time series data collection you will see that the graphs are behaving in a particular way you see the trend yeah the trends are well established mm -hmm. um, for that i am still confident that by the end of the fifth year we should be pretty done with this crisis yeah um, I, my, my, my prayer is definitely that I don't know whose prayer isn't that that we, should, that we just sit and want a place to keep, to keep on degenerating and degenerating. That is what we, that is what we will all wish and all pray and, and hope for. And and then they, because we have other things that that are also just plaguing. The, we have the health things, 
we have the COVID that came and added its own there. Oh, People yeah. are worried about getting vaccinations. Oh, oh yeah. and sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes I, I, I get up and I like, you're even trying to sit and say a little prayer. And you're like, sometimes the prayer is just one big sigh. You just go, and you're like, okay. I think, I think this conversation may even be incomplete if we don't touch on challenging things like COVID. Uh -huh. Because, um, you know, uh, there is this whole debate about uh, vaccines, vaccines, no vaccines, and stuff. And unfortunately, many people are falling prey to it. Right. I, I think the stories that we are hearing nowadays should be able to uh, enable all and sundry to take a step back and think again right. before taking certain right. positions. Right. Um, as we speak, COVID is the third wave. The mm -hmm. Delta variant is running its rounds in Cameroon. It is. It is. Um, it is very clear that uh, those who are falling victim to it, ultimately paying the price of death with their lives, are those who, who did not vaccinate. Uh -huh. yeah, yeah. And, and I have a, 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 your nephew downstairs here works with works, works with atrium health. The, the data is there, as yes. clear as ever. Yes. Yes. You know, the, the, the number of people who are and then to talk less, not only catching it, then actually dying from it. Um, 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 I had COVID in March. And the cost, what I paid to treat myself, even though the severity of my illness was, as not, was not as bad as that of others, mm -hmm. what it cost me to treat myself it's not something I want to do it again. I know. So if I can prevent it, if I can make, if I can make it not even happen, why wouldn't you do it? You you pay the price with your body. Mm -hmm. You pay the price. Your from, pocket. From your pocket. If I can avoid that by having a free job, right? I would do anything to have that free job. Uh, I don't know. I pity people who who are on this, who are looking at this thing otherwise, who continue to believe in. in I I so, don't. I don't know what what the thing yeah. was who are out there exposed in the school building. You better believe yeah. that the minute it was given to yeah. uh, there as, uh, as 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 uh, available for those of us who are now being called frontline workers because because now that they they, 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 they locked us with the nurses and everything because they're going to be in the school environment there. And I was like, here you go, go ahead. You know, not a problem at all for me. Go get the vaccine. vaccine. When the vaccines were announced, when the first vaccines were announced. There was a lot of uncertainty on how soon we're going to have vaccines in Cameroon. Then um, a friend of ours said he has some possibilities of bringing in some vaccines, mm -hmm. but they will be for sale. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow, this could be the best gift that you can give anyone who is dear to you in, in 2020, mm -hmm. in 2021. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's the first thing that came to my mind. I say, this will be the best gift to anybody. Who it's is. the gift of life. Though. It yes. is a gift of life. So what, uh, what? I sat down and made a list of friends and family because I wanted to place an order for mm -hmm. them. But I wanted first of all to be sure that they want to take it. I didn't want to go on assumptions. Yeah, and go pay good money for something and then. Yes, you will be surprised. The number of people who said no. And of course, I didn't give a chance for anybody who said no. I didn't need to try to convince you. I just let, 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 let you go. It's become a very personal thing where, where that has caused some serious rifts and arguments on less WhatsApp than, groups everywhere. Less than a month ago, one of my friends mm -hmm. who turned down my offer called me to say he was COVID positive. And I said, really? He said, yes. Said, what are you doing about it? He narrated his story. Then a few days after, he called me and said, it's bad. It's serious. I said, what's happening? He told me this level of severity of his illness. Mm -hmm. And he's now out of danger, mm -hmm. but not without paying a heavy price for it. First, he lost a good part of his lungs. It's going to take a long time for his lungs to heal. But I'm not going to tell you how much he spent financially, but his health bill 
I'm sure if he had a way of saving that money and do, or doing something else with it, he would have. He would never have hesitated. Right. This right. is to say, this situation is serious. It is. And it is. people need to sit up and take it seriously. I, I think anybody who refuses to take a COVID vaccine is 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 um, condemning himself to a death sentence. You know. Condemning himself to a death sentence. And the unfortunate part of it is, if you were only condemning your own self, it would not be bad. That is the thing. You contaminate someone else. Right. So condemning yourself. Right. And possibly condemning someone else. Right. You know. Process. Who, who has their own right to live, even if you don't want to. Oh, yes. I saw, I, I watched a video of some man here. I, oh, my goodness. It's just that he was throwing the bombs there. F this and F that. He was, but he was mad. He was mm -hmm. saying his wife is, 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 a, is a cancer patient, went to the hospital. And they, 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 they were only able to treat her very briefly and sending her home we took to go on with her pain medication and everything to go try her best from home, saying, we need the beds. We need the beds because the, our, our hospital is being filled with COVID-19 patients. Mm -hmm. And so the man was angry and says, you people who will not take the vaccine, mm -hmm. why are you going to hospital now that you are, now that you are sick? You right. say you don't trust the doctors to give you the, the, right. what they're giving the vaccine, but right. now you're going to hospital and then making them to kick my wife out. Oh, that man was so furious. Mm -hmm. He was throwing every little bomb out here, like, oh, the F this and F that. I'm like, okay, I cannot forward this one. Mm -hmm. But I, I so saw with him, I saw the point of what he was saying. Yes, yes, yes. You don't want to do it. Then now when you're sick, off the hospital you go. Then you fill out the hospital with all the, all the beds are taken by, by you. And the other people who are sick, who did their own part of the thing, have mm -hmm. no bed to sleep on because mm -hmm. they filled up the place. Yes. So, so okay. I... I I hope, I hope, I hope that that we will. And it's a very personal thing. So some people were not trying to just say, okay, no, but it's people are very adamant people who don't want to are feeling so strongly about it. And I'm going, but I know you took German measles vaccine, whoopy mm -hmm. cough vaccine, mm -hmm. TB vaccine. We're all in, in schools, we all have what they call mukele on our arms. Yeah, yes, yes. yeah. we, yes. we didn't, as they say, we don't know what is inside. I said, do you know what is inside the bread, the bread? That the baker baked that we ate this morning from the boulangerie. Did you see him baking it? Do you know what he put in it? But you are trusting that the bread is good and you had it then the vaccine. So does, it's something does which need, does anyone anyone need to wait for the vaccine to kill us if it intends to kill us? I tell you. The paracetamol that is sold everywhere and now we we, yeah, we that's we, what I'm saying. We, we take like granite when we when we when we feel a bit sick. What do you know is really what, in what's it? in there? Yeah. What's in there? So so my brother. They will just, there's some things you just do your own bit. Yeah. We say our own bit that we can say here. Yes. Some will not be happy with it. Some right. will, maybe one more person, that's how I look at it. If right. one more person sits and says, maybe I should, I, it's, I should, it's about time I went and did something about this. Mm -hmm. Then we've done our part. Mm -hmm. So my brother, we've circled, circled, circled. We've yeah. gone from Bambi, we've gone through Bambili, we've gone through uh, Sacred Heart, Bambili, uh, 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 Bakele, and mm -hmm. turned around now to actually where you are currently. We've mm -hmm. hit, I think, some two hours of some good chat right mm -hmm. here. Indeed. And so I would not want to weary you out even, even more than this, but it has been a pleasure chatting with you. We're just doing this, this because this one is recorded. This is yes. pretty much what our chats are like, even on the phone. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'd like it to be for you to just talk, just mm -hmm. talk and talk. So people get to see the person and learn the lessons without you necessarily saying lesson one is this, lesson two is this, I'm going to be taking notes. By just mm -hmm. listening, listening, listening to you speak mm -hmm. and getting nuggets of wisdom out of there. The story of the man, Paul Njukang Tasson, the village boy, as he has, he's also <laughs> calling himself a village boy, who has gone from there to, 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 to higher heights, to really great heights, and made something good out of that. Because there's some people who get to those heights, and that's it. You're not going to be seeing them anywhere around the place anymore. That's going to be it. Mm -hmm. you, you have to wait for a TV show to see them on there. You're going to have to wait for some conference thing to see them. But this is one friend, just that one doesn't want to be showing videos and things, who is accessible. If you call him, he will answer his phone. If you go to meet him, he will meet you. By the way, you're not even said it. I don't think you want to say it, so I will say it. The, 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 CAS, the CAS 81 through 83 group that is meeting in Yaoundé in a week's time, that's who's going to be hosting it. They were, on, we were running around the place trying to find La Falaise, trying to find Hotel de Député and all, that, all of that stuff. And he says, hey, I'll be heading back to, the, to, the, to, to Cameroon. I'll be there in time for this thing. I'm going to just go ahead and host you. End of story. Everybody jubilating, everybody happy. 
I know it's Pepsi's Pepsi issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it falls on a head squarely. Mami, we thank you. We thank you for that, for hosting our brothers and sisters. I cannot wait to see them gather together there as it should be, because these are moments we will never forget. Precious, priceless moments. So we thank you for hosting us. The rest of us who are out here will find a little corners to congregate the best we can. But we know the real hub, the major place that's going to have the greatest number of people gathered will be in Yaoundé at your, at your home. So mm -hmm. we thank you for it. We're looking forward to it. And I will say long live cast, long live friendship. Friendship is, is, is a, a, a very important thing. And I thank you for taking the time to sit there and just talk to, uh, uh, for this show, for, uh, on behalf of Vusa World Radio, on behalf of the Music Sun Music Show. Thank you. And I've not, I forgot to mention one of your names. Oh, because I was going to ask you about how the Seron name came. But <laughs> <laughs> how the Seron, Seron name came about. I could have, we just chatted here and I completely forgot about But how did you get through? How did, that, how did you get that name? You know, growing up, all young men uh, had their stars that they admired. Right. Some were right. stars, some were stars in the music world, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, I just loved the music of Serum. Right. And remember Supernatural? Right. Yeah, so, right, right. And because of that, I got you, stuck with it. You got stuck with the name. Your yeah, known names are quite different. There's, there's Serum. Then we move from Serum to Papi. <laughs> 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 to papi, then the other ones came and said the igwe, igwe, the igwe. Oh my goodness! But but it's all it's all, it's all good. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. So I mean, the, the look at the names, and sometimes I have gotten used to Paul Castle. Right? I, I finally gotten used to, to that. But before it was like who? So if you didn't say Jukang, I, I don't get it. Then it was Serap, and I still say that I try to watch myself mm -hmm. in public to say the right thing. But if you say I look at you there and not it's not Paul or it's not Tesla that comes to my mind at all. It's either it is Seron itself first or it's going to be Papi <laughs> going through the, the, the Igwe. That is that, that is what I, I my head has retained. And the Igwe came from people. Remember we had this um um uh, email emailing group. Right. Yes, right. several years ago. Yes. Uh, I think I created that group. And it's yes, that it was you. It, 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 right. <laughs> <laughs> it has stuck. It has stuck. Yes. It has, and some people can be listening to it and thinking it's because of the No, 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 no. He wasn't a minister then. Mm -hmm. We just gave him, the, gave, gave him the name. And I guess it was a, a prophecy because it came uh, true. But the bottom line is whether it is Jukang or it is Paul or it is Igwe or it is Seron or it is Papi, mm -hmm. all of that person, we love all of that person. <laughs> and we're, we're grateful. Those of us who are your friend, who I can count ourselves as your friends, are blessed. And we thank you for it. You need to hear it. You need to hear it from us. You need to hear it and know it. We, we, we are grateful for the fact that uh, you're the kind of friend that you are, the kind of brother that you are. And for our cast group, the Igwe that you are. <laughs> so God bless you. God bless your family. I want you to close up with whatever last word that you have is up to you. Whether it's advice, a wish, whatever it is that you want to say, it's up to you. No, I think um, uh, the least that uh, one should say to close this conversation is um, the fact that um, uh, it provides a platform for, for us all those of your, your guests who have come before me mm -hmm. um, to honor our alma mater, Kas Bambini, mm -hmm. and to spend this moment in the hope that the things we say, the things we share, eventually inspire someone, right. uh, especially help someone not to lose hope. Amen. Because, uh, that. Uh, ultimately, uh, life is uh, ensuring that there is something to look forward to. And um, that's something to look forward to has to be organized and, and structured. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a human being can only move forward if there is a structure around you that permits you not to lose hope. Uh, desperation is, is the worst mm -hmm. thing that can happen to anybody. Right. So, depression that is knocking at your door like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, my hope uh, sitting in this conversation, sitting through this conversation, is that someone picks something 
from this conversation that can help him uh, either turn around or uh, uh, expedite his, 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 his path of personal growth. Right. And why not contribution to, to humanity and, and the community at large? Mm -hmm. So that's the last I will say. I want to thank you uh, so much. My and pleasure. once again, uh, kudos to the, the owners of, of this Africa to the World Radio. I think uh, uh, platforms like this, we need, we need a, a, a bit more of them. Amen. And, um, you know, there is a way, an attitude that people have that uh, could just so easily make some people look like, 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 like devils. You know, there are many people out there in Cameroon who will sit through. I mean, people even in high places who will sit through this conversation with you, just like we did, mm -hmm. because this is important. Right. This is important. Right. Um, <clears throat> Otherwise, why did someone invest in building this, this radio station? Exactly. Because we have to be able to provide the content. Exactly. For radio station to reach out to, to, to all the people who, who can tap into this, into this kind of conversations and the things we say to right. improve themselves, to improve right. the community, to improve society at large. Thank you for seeing, for seeing and saying that. Because you see, we, 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 com we complain, there's a lot that we look at out there that is filth, that we don't like. Yeah. But if you're not going to, you're not, you're not offering any alternative, mm -hmm. then how are you going to complain about the, 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 something that is out there? You say, our children are exposed to this, they're exposed to pornography, they don't, nobody's inspiring them to do anything and all of that stuff. But how? How then are you going to expect that, that uh, 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 things are going to improve if you're not even putting anything out there, if you're not saying anything. People right. often, often talk about be the change that you want to see. Right. Be the change that you want to, to, to see. Do right. something about it. So that's why I'm glad that you see that and we definitely will want to be calling people in to come and say something that we can listen to mm -hmm. and be inspired. That's the whole idea and be inspired. You're sitting down there thinking this life, attire. No, don't be tired. This is, this is somebody here who picked himself up and the way things progress, progress bit by bit, stop with it to the point where he's here and where he's going to go to even greater heights than this. So don't lose hope if you're listening to us. Don't lose hope. Um, get up in the morning and say, if you're still alive and God has still left his breath in your nostrils, it means it's not over. Go on out there, go on out there and do the best you can and leave your own impact. You don't even have to have a huge platform. Why? Your own little place, your own little home. Yes, yes, yes. It's not Oprah Winfrey who's going to come and teach your children and encourage them when they're feeling sad. She's there doing her own thing. You are your own children's Oprah Winfrey. That's you are the one who's there with them. Do it for them. Do it for your community. Do it at whatever level you can do it, and just make this world a better place. One little bit, one little person at a time. That's the whole point of this show. And I thank you again so much for 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 coming, for honoring the invitation to come and and, and speak to us. So, without further ado, I'll be saying, see you in oh, a the bit. Oh, the honor has been mine. Bye-bye. Bye, bye, bye. Take care. Thank you. All the best.